Brady, Feeney, A2, Doyle, B1, Leeson, C1, Deegan, Nolan, B2. as well as peeping, and you'd bloody well be weeping if you don't stop moaning. What did he have? Flashes and eggs, sir. Rashers and eggs. Nothing but the best for the queer fella. So you're the new officer. That's right. I'm from... Uh... Yes, in Ishbofen. We heard all about you. I'll telephone the chief. Come on. Morning, Mulligan. Is this him? Yes, the new recruit. I'll take him to the chief shop. Oh, thanks. I want to have a cup of tea. Officer Mulligan will take your suitcase. Follow me. Pardon me. Uh, what's your position here? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. My name is Regan. I'm a senior warder. Mr. Regan, uh, how long have you been here? Seventeen years. It's a long time serving a good cause. That's a fact. I mean, protecting society from murderers and thieves and such is good work. I mean, uh, I know what you mean. Good morning, Governor. Morning, Governor. Good morning, Governor. Ah, Mr. Regan. Good morning, Governor. I thought I'd left strict orders about Finnegan. Who's this? This is the new order, Thomas Crillon. Oh, so you're Mr. Crimin of Inish Barford? Yes, sir. You realize that it's an honor to be selected for many applicants? I do, sir. Why did you apply to become a prison officer? Well, sir, some people have to become warders or policemen, otherwise they want to become a society. We'd be at the mercy of any ruffians that wanted to rob or steal. Life would not be safe, and the people would have no security. So, you approve of our penal system? Yes, sir. It's a deterrent against any kind of sin. You believe in hanging? Well, Mr. Regan, sir, I was brought up to believe that Every crime deserves its just punishment, and especially murder. Well, you seem very well versed for a country fellow. I suppose this is your appointment. Yes, sir. Wait here. Now, about Finnegan. He was sick. The way Mr. Donnelly treated Never him. Never mind what the other warders do. You had no business allowing him to leave the punishment cell. Those were my orders. He might have died. You are aware, sir, how the prisoners might have reacted, considering the occasion. And perhaps so. We forget Finnegan. You know that on occasions like these, I'm counting on you as usual. You mean the two hangings, sir? The hangings, of course. You can count on me, sir. Perhaps you consider assigning the new officer to me. He'll be of great help to me in the next two weeks. I might add that a double hanging is likely to show how fit he is for the force. Now, Mr. Crimmon, for the time being, you'll be assisting Mr. Regan. Remember that you're on probation. Yes, sir. What the governor means is that if you watch your step, in 20 or 25 years, you'll have a wing to yourself. Mr. Regan will give you the statutory rules and orders. Study them. Oh, know them by heart, sir. I don't doubt it. Time to rise and shine. Let's go, Mr. Grant, sir.
stuck up in the well, don't you, sir? I've known him since we were on the next cell to each other. You mean you were in jail together? Yes, could be before your time. Oh, during the troubles? Yeah, we got five years. Uh, five years in prison for your country? Five years, a long time. Did they, uh, did they do much to you? Oh, not really. Of course, I didn't like the choking. Choking? Solitary confinement, the number one diet. Bread and water. But what I like least of all has been deprived of a mattress. How long would you be in uh, Come on, let's go and get you a uniform. Oh, right, sir. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Chief. You're early at work? Well, I couldn't sleep. Well, if it's the hanging you're worried about, sir. I'll have everything well under control. Hmm. Perhaps you will. The new order has arrived. I've assigned it, Mr. Regan. I'll have him installed at once, sir. Chief. Yes, sir? Do you happen to know Mr. Regan's retirement and pension date? Now, allowing for a special service with the Republic, uh, without counting 42 infractions of the rules... Never mind the mathematics. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Regan can be discharged at any time to receive his pension in full. Unless there's a promotion. He is in line for promotion, sir. Oh, thank you, Chief. Uh, remind me to have a talk with the Minister about Mr. Regan. Yes, sir. After the hangings, that is. If I thought you did that purposely, Clancy, I'd have you put back on lavatory detail. Yes. that you drew the culture, Mr. Regan, both of us having the same rank. Be careful that you don't get drowned in Mr. Regan's milk of human kindness. In spite of the uniform, I still think I can smell the turf and the donkeys. Mr. Donnelly, I should reserve your delicate sense of smell for the chokey. You refused to let the poor devils empty their pots yesterday, leaving them in stench and filth on a number one diet. You think these fellows were put there for nothing? Oh, now that both of us are up for promotion to sub-chief, if you were appointed, I would be delighted to serve under you. But then they haven't appointed you yet, Mr. Regan. Ah! Ready for duty, Mr. Crimmins? Yes, sir. Good. Mr. Regan, pick up clarity and reception and take him to wing B1. Check wings A1 and A2, Mr. Donnelly, because... All correct, sir. What do you mean, all correct, sir? The men have been communicating on the pipes again. What do you think the news was? I, I wouldn't know, sir. Of course you wouldn't, Mr. Donnelly. But the legs already know that the new warder has arrived and has been assigned to Mr. Regan, and that the governor is going to discuss Mr. Regan with the minister. No doubt uh, about the promotion? It's a bit of gossip for the prisoners. It'll give them something to talk about. So it's entertainment you want for them legs, eh? Prisoner McDonough will fit the jacket for you tonight. He's a fine tailor. Thank you, sir. It's a pity he gets drunk and then uses his scissors on girls' underwear. Right. Now get out and around your landings. And look for them fellas talking on the water pipes. And if you find the telegraphist, report him to me. Yes, sir. Leave your kit bag inside and then stand here and wait for the doctor. Stop that noise! Who's the bloody baritone? Shut up that noise! Where do you think you are? Wing B1, come on out! Nice day for the races? Yes. Well, I don't think I can make it today. Too much to do in the office. The accommodations are down there. The what, sir? The accommodations. Get the men moving and then follow them up. Well, get moving. Yes, sir. All right, men. <laughs> to the uh, accommodations. Rough screw, eh, neighbor? 
I feel it going right down to me toes and do me a world of good, sir. All right, now, brother, like. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, Torah does it, sir. Torah does it. I always say, sir, if you're going to do out in the child, sir, you might as well do as well, sir. Oh, my God, reward you, sir, yeah. Well, you must be the seventh son of the seventh son, or one of the leaves from Limerick of your mother's side. Oh. Now, that's the cure for the cold and the wind and the world's neglect. All right. Now, you. Which leg is it? Ah, whichever you prefer. What do you mean, prefer? To commence with. With the left one, then. to die, sir. You've been drinking that stuff again? No, sir, no. Just an odd sup neighbour and I had out with the bottles. I'm afraid they put one over on you. I'll have to be taken out for drinking, Don Lavin. I know, it's as much my fault as there, sir, for, for not keeping an eye on what was going on. I hope this alcohol destroys you for life. May God forgive you, sir. There's been a reprieve. Which one? Silver top. Good for him. I knew it. I was right. It's not totally unexpected. After all, he had special recommendations. We'll only have the one queer fellow to execute now, sir. We? Oui. Yes, of course, the meat axe killer. I'd say he deserves everything he's going to get, too. Perhaps. Let's go on, it's getting stuffy around here. it worse going out to be chopped? Tell us, Dunlavin. Well, the fellow that feels it worse is the fellow that's been in the nick before, when some other merchant was topped. Well, how about the man that's never been in prison? Well, he's usually a respectable sort of a chap that's never done anything but murder, and that's only once. He knows nothing about it, except something he's seen in the papers. Condemned man entered the hanghouse at 7.59. At 8.3, the doctor pronounced life extinct. That's a lot of a lad. I've been there, Mr. Crimmon. In the first place, the doctor has his back turned after the trap goes down. And he doesn't turn and face it until the screw has caught the rope. I mean, an officer like me? You're likely to be doing just that on the top of Querfella, Mr. Crimmon. Go on, Kelly. Tell him what happens after he tries to stop the rope from wriggling. You go and get your breakfast and you don't come back for an hour. Then you cut the Querfella down and the doctor slits the back of his neck to see if the bones are broken. Who's to say what happens in the hour your man is swinging, Mr. Crimmon? I knew a screw once who smuggled out medical reports and sold them to the Sunday papers. One chap had said, lived 17 minutes at the end of the rope. Ah, oh, that's impossible. Facts is facts, Mr. Crimmins, and they must be faced. Dell, 
The fellas will show you how to lay your kit. Stand here now and wait till the doctor comes. Thank you, sir. Everybody by the cell doors! Everybody by the cell doors! Be quick about it. Appear to many as the man said. Age 35, religion or say. Life. A damn sight better than death, son, any day of the week. Yeah, the longest you could do would be about 20 years. More than likely you get out in half of that. The last man out to finish up in the bog, he only done 11. 11 years? Yeah. How do you live through it? A minute at a time. After all, you won't see a woman. A child. A dog. A fire. When you think a man would know all about that without you telling it to him? I have to find out. I only know what you know yourself, ma'am. Oh, they can't hang him. Is that the wife of the fellow that killed his brother? So it seems. I know, I can't believe it. That a murderer should have a good-looking mat. There's nothing in the rules that says you can't look at the wife of a condemned man. There was some word about a reprieve. Which of them is it? News travels right enough. Just sit there for a minute. She wants to know which one was reprieved. I thought she might. The minister's reprieved the more influential of the two. Silvertop. Silvertop. Look, Mr. Regan, would you mind? I mean, you can do these things better than me. I'll tell her. She'll have to know sooner or later. There are some that call him a double-dyed bloody hypocrite. Can I get you a drink? I'm not a widow yet. I hope you won't be. My name is Regan. I know the queer fellow well. Screw. It was the bloody screws at Boston that taught him the butcher trade, the way done in his brother. Whiskey, please. He's got to get off. He's got to get off. Do you hear that, Mr. Regan? Get off. A reprieve. Life, maybe, according to the evidence. Evidence? He's they a... don't know everything. Yes, my husband killed his brother. And now he'll be killed. Have a drink. Silvertop has just been reprieved. His sentence commuted to life. And my husband? There's still time. I'll pray for him. A lot of good that'll do him. They'll all pray for him when he's down in the line. Oh, dear God. And I'm the bitch that caused it all. You? Forget it. She 
might need another drink. Time to check back in. There's a lot more to be done. I've seen many hangings, Mr. Reed. I've seen 14 since I'm here. But, but do you believe in it? I don't believe in murder at any time, Mr. Quinnan. Yes, we'll be living outside the prison where the officer's quarters have been recanted. The chief has found digs here around the corner of the widow O'Hara as the room's paid for. I appreciate that, Mr. Reed. It's all in the line of duty. And uh, don't forget to leave your uniform at the main gate and let Mac take your measurements. All right. And take along these statutory rules and regulations. You'll be wanting to read them in bed. now for a few shillings rent. A bloody screw. Any news? Yes, there's been a reprieve. Your husband? No, no, the other one. And they'll hang my husband. Give me a light. What did you say your name was? Thomas Crimmon, from Inish Bottom. Straight up from the west. The newest help on hanging day. He'll be there when they choke the life out of him. He'll be there when they cut him down. You'll be there, won't you? If they order me to. I, I do what I'm ordered. Oh, they will, they will. Where'd you get your good looks from? What do you think? He's handsome, isn't he, Aunt Mary? Well, I've seen worse. Go get your soup. Why do you do a warder's job? It's a good job. Responsible job. Uh, officers like myself trying to... Scum. We're only enforcing the law. Oh, the law. The law. When they hang my husband, is that just? Your husband did a terrible thing, didn't he? When they've done him in the old fellas, at least he'll come along and console me. You come and give me the why and the wherefore. Till I don't want any supper.
This is your, isn't he? He's on his way. What, what do you think you're doing, Dunlavin? I'm shining this up for a special visitor. A fellow from the kitchen just told me they're doing a special dinner today on account of Holy Healy. Do you mean we're getting food to their meal today? <laughs> I'm hoping to get the right side of him so that he'll give me a letter of recommendation for when I get out. And now, I must tidy up my little place. Hang up me holy pictures. And think up a few funny remarks for Holy Healy. Make ready for Mr. Healy's visit. And you'll be getting rid of that piece of enamel, Don Lavin. All right, Murphy. Let's go and meet Mr. Healy. Stand by your door. Good morning. Good morning. Any complaints? Hello? Well, now I'm here representing the department. If there are any complaints, now is the time to make them. Mr. Regan, a new officer. This is Mr. Krim, Mr. Healy. Good luck. Don't let me interrupt the good work. I understand the reprieved man is over here, Regan. Oh, yes, sir. He's just up here. The lucky man, eh? For now, your case will be examined every five years. Meanwhile, I thought you might like to hang a holy picture in your cell. Thank you, sir. Now, keep a cheerful countenance, my friend. God gave you back your life, and the least you can do is to thank him every breath you draw. Yes, sir, I do, sir. Right, but now, be a good heart. I'll call in and see you again. That is, if uh, duty permits. Yes, sir. Uh, but I was wondering if you could... You are helping at the execution, I understand. Yes, I shall be with the condemned man, sir, seeing that he doesn't do away with himself during the night, and that he goes down the hole with his neck properly broken in the morning without making too much fuss about it. It's a painful duty. Neck breaking and throttling, sir. You must excuse me, sir. I've, I've seen rather a lot of it, and they say familiarity breeds contempt. Well, with one consolation, Regan, the condemned man gets the priest and the sacraments. More than his victim got, maybe. I venture to suggest that some of them die holier deaths than if they finish their natural span. But we can't advertise, commit a murder and die a happy death. We have them all at it. They take religion very seriously in this country. Quite so, quite so. Save him. Dear, dear, the cannon will be very distressed. Where to? To the last cell of the hospital. You know the one we use. The one furthest from the kitchen. Well, I better be going. The books must be kept straight. Receipt for the body and all that. That's not a very nice way of looking at it. No, sir, but then lots of people might consider ours a very nice job. Ours? Yes, sir. Me and the doctor and the hangman. And if you don't mind my saying so yourself, sir. I wish you wouldn't say me and the hangman. I have never met the hangman. And for the matter of that, never seen a hanging. If you feel as you do, sir. Why do you stay in the service? I don't know. It's a soft job between hanging. about your good conduct. Oh, thank you, sir. 
And any suggestion you might have about my deportment, I'd be only too grateful for it, sir. All right, move. Ah, Mr. Crimmon. Mr. Regan asked me to report to you, sir. I hear he's gone to the governor again, trying to spare the life of a bloody murderer. I must give you the dry wretch listening to Mr. Regan all the time. You think these fellows will have been hanged for nothing the way he carries on? And all this old yap about them praying for us and so forth. I often think the man is mad. Mad? Mad with villainy and hypocrisy. When I get out, I shall bring all my influence to bear on the matter. I shall take it up with the minister. I went to school with his cousin. Who do you think you are? A bloody high court judge or something? I'm not a common criminal, I'll have you know, my good man. I'm not your good man. He's a college-educated man. Oh, he's no murderer. All he's in for is embezzlement. There's only two suicides over him. Use the pan. That's why we have the leather band with the thimble. Now, the, the thread needs waxing. There you are. Thanks. Finished work. Oh, is it? What's the matter with you? You island culture. That's another one you haven't done right. Here, take it back and do it again. something worse. Anytime. Can the new screw spare me a moment of his precious time? Well, I, I just wanted to... Oh, go on, don't mind me. Want a drink? No, I'm all right, thanks. Have you a girl? What? Is there someone waiting for you back in uh, Inish Buffin? No, there's not. 
There's no one waiting for me. Men are scarce in Ireland. You realize it when you see someone different. Someone new and not too bad looking. In some ways, you remind me of my husband. I first met him in Cardiff. He was from the West, too. Oh, whereabouts? Connemara. He was 17. He came over to England with his brother. They were looking for work. But he got into some trouble and was sent to Boston. When we got married, we moved to Dublin. That was eight years ago. Hey. You shouldn't drink so much of that stuff. I wonder how he is now. I saw him. To tell you the truth, I, I didn't think he was the kind of fellow to, to do what he was supposed to do. Maybe he loved me too much and was jealous. Jealous of what? Well, that's it, you see. I... <laughs> oh, come on. Have a drink. Go on. There you are. You see, you're not so bad after all. You're not a real warder yet. I'm doing my job all right, don't you worry. Oh, your job. Huh. Your job. Is this your job? Upholding the rules and regulations? That's right. When you help hang my husband, you'll feel so righteous, won't you? The law must be upheld. He had a fair hearing. Oh, my God. be right here for him when he gets out and that there'll be no squealer on the way. I've kept the linen clean, which is more than I can say for some that's going the roads. I have a stout where the ladies sit. After they hung himself, you'll have a free run with a screw. It'll be lawful then. Get away, you red roaring bitch! Oh, right here, Scorbin.
tonight. After all, what I said in the pub tonight was true enough. It's happened before. What's done is done. There wasn't any real love between us. There wasn't, Thomas. You only think you love me. We wish. We dream. Then we're just ourselves again. What we had was night love. It never went beyond the room we were in. Outside it was different. I'm sorry. I was lonely. I needed a man. I told you. It's happened before. My husband was working on the boats. He was away for weeks and weeks. But his brother was there. He lived with us. He was nice. I liked him. And then one day he said he liked me. Suddenly it was all different, like flipping over a coin. Well... He was strong and persuasive. And anyway, I didn't object too much. People get to know. The word gets about. Sean came back. Found me in bed with his brother. branded as a common whore. I didn't have to testify. Of course, that's what I am. You should have seen the way the men looked at me in the pub tonight. It's different for them. About a few more feet before morning. Hey, us, you mean? We've got four of us in a walking party after tea. Uh, nice, comfortable, flowery day he'll have down there. There'll be grown cabbages there in a month or two. You're in a terrible hurry to get that poor Scott under the cabbages. How do you know he won't get a reprieve, the same as old Silvertop? I'd wager me son to bacon that he'd be topped. If anyone would be injured enough to take me up. <laughs> Neighbor here, lazy son of bacon. The queer fellow will be top tomorrow morning. Can you take hers? Five snout. I wait here. Half a bacon. No, no, even bacon. Even bacons. Even bacon. Can you take hers? Come on, now you, sir. You look like a sportsman. 
I wouldn't need anything after he touched it. None of us starving. I bet you a reprieve will come before the morning. I feel it in me bones. Ah, that's the rheumatics. Is he on, neighbor? He is. Shake hands and let the two years. How are you, Lord Lonsdale? Now, now, leave that on one side. As soon as the trap falls tomorrow morning, your son to bacon is mine. Anything to declare? The usual. The usual samples. The ingredients don't change. The methods are proved out. Indeed they do, sir. The essential change of clothes. Who are they? A smaller one owns a pub in London. Does some selling of spirits on the side. Comes here once or twice a year with an assistant when they need him. Himself has arrived. Himself has arrived. Place hasn't changed much, has it? Hardly. I'll just pop down, have a look at the condemned man, and then we'll have the whole afternoon free. Right. Adam? Yes, sir. Okay. This is the hangar. Ah, Mr. Regan. I cannot leave you in more proficient hands when it comes to occasions like these. When Jack up a minute, lad. I don't think it'll fit you, sir. We don't have to be particular. Mr. Regan's will do. Which side is he in? This one. He likes to wear a warder's cap, so the queer fellow won't suspect who he is. He gets his weight from the doctor so he knows what drop to give him. But he likes to have a look at him himself to see what build he is, how thick his neck is, and so on. If he gave him too much one way, he'd strangle him instead of breaking his neck. If he gave him too much the other way, he'd pull the head clean off his shoulders. Quality of Yes. May God have pity on us. Well set up, lad. Twelve stone. Fine pair of shoulders on him. Let's keep that appointment at the pub at the top of O'Connell Street. I'll have you taken off the side gate, avoiding the yard. Seamus, my appearance might cause a disturbance. It'll be difficult enough to control them this night. Is there still a chance of a reprieve? It's possible. You see Kathleen, sir, she insists... Kathleen? Where fellow's wife, sir? I see. She insists on what? He had a reason for killing his brother. She didn't say that at the trial. I know, sir. You see, it's a very private reason, sir. She wants to tell it to the governor herself. It might be difficult. But I'll see what I can do. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, everybody. It's no bother to me to try and save a man's life, Mr. Grimm. Uh, John, I really don't know. Uh, with the hanging tomorrow morning. Yes, yes, I admit the school union dinner is important. But, John, all right, all right. If everything's quiet, I'll show up. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Come in, Regan. Sorry to keep you waiting. About the queer fellow? Now, we've been over that, Regan. I told you I can't disturb the minister without new evidence. Matthew, the queer fellow's woman wants to talk to you. You know how I feel about talking to the condemned men's families. Why do you bring things like this to me whenever there's a hanging? But she seems to have some new evidence. Have any of them ever shown any new evidence on the last day? It's of no use to see the poor wretch. I'm sorry, Regan. If there's
there's any last word from the minister, we'll hear it. half a foot longer and have the clay at the top left nice and neat for filling in in the morning. Mr. Crimmins, take over. What do I have to do, sir? I said take over. The number one diet didn't matter. Well, Mr. Regan says it's the deep vibration of the mattress that's the worst. Go back to work. Yes, sir. savage today. You couldn't even have a word with the next fella. Well, I never saw him like that before. Ah, so this fella been tough in the morning. It's on his nerves. What's it to Regan? He won't feel it. He's on the last watch. Twelve to late. Till death do us part. You think the law makes the queer fella's death different, not like anyone else's? Regan, I hope you'll forget those things you just mentioned. If talk like that got outside the prison. I think the whole show should be put on in Croke Park. After all, it's at the public expense and they let it go on. They should have something more for their money than a bit of paper stuck up on the gate when it's over. Good night, Mr. Regan. If I didn't know you, I'd report what you've said to the governor. You will, anyway. It's funny the way they all ask for Regan. I suppose they think he'll bring them good luck. Him being good living. Good living. Who ever heard of a good living screw? Hey, did you hear about the screw who married the prostitute? No, what happened to him? He dragged her down to his own level. <laughs> Mr. Crimmon. I left you in charge. Where'd they get the cigarettes? From me. I thought they could do with the smoke. So that they could spend their time out here blowing rings in the evening air like lords. The queer fella's got to be buried in the morning whether we like it or not. So cut the malarkey and keep on working. I never asked to be a bloody hangman's assistant. Drop it, man. It's a bad night for all of us. You should pray for all men hardened in killing, including the hangman and the screws. Myself and Crimmon have a long night ahead of us. We don't want to be finishing your job for you. I never saw a screw like that before. Neither did anybody else. Kathleen is at the pub. You might go and tell her that the governor is at the Shamrock Hall at a dinner. Not supposed to leave here. Use the back gate, I'll let you in. And Mr. Crimmon, you're fortunate to have been sacked for that foolishness with the queer fellow's wife. That's all. Kathleen. 
Mr. Regan gave me a message for you. What is it? Do you know where the governor is tonight? Where else would he be in the prison the night before hanging? No, he's not. He's at a dinner at the Shamrock Hall. Well, if you were to talk to him personally. I'll go. Good luck. Thank you, Thomas. and singing that hymn you composed. Will you call the governor or shall I go in? Disappeared. Oh! Is everything all right? Well, what's wrong? It seems that the black box with the hanging tools has been misplaced. With an execution to come off in the AM? What will the governor and the department say if it doesn't come off as planned? Are you sure it's lost? We had it with us all the time. Now, I takes nothing to drink, ever. But we must have left it in one of the pubs we visited. What pub? Well, I wouldn't know, sir, with watching himself and not the box. But I remember every pub we were in. How many were there? Eighteen in total, sir. The last visit, it was only fourteen. Order a squad car and take these two to every pub they can remember. You'd better find it before the governor gets back. Right away, governor. Are you the prison governor? Uh, yes, I am. What is it? I'm in a hurry. I couldn't persuade her to go away, sir. I'm the wife of the man who's going to be hanged in the morning. I've been waiting to see you. This is not my office. Nor are these my office hours. But I have evidence which may save my husband. What possible evidence could save the queer fellow at this hour? You'll be able to judge that, sir, if you'll hear me out. There's no black box or brown box or green box. There's no box at all. I'd be grateful if you'd allow me to get me rightful sleep. Good night. You have a circular rod. There's another one we visited. Let's go then. What happens if we don't find the tools? We don't hang him, obviously. So you see, he found out about me and his brother. And, well, what more right can a husband have to kill? Why wasn't this brought out at the trial? And what proof do you have? 
It's easy to say. Easy to say? What wife would want to brand herself a whore? I would have told. My husband wouldn't have it. Of course, if I'd known the verdict. You see, I've been waiting for a reprieve. No, there is none. Would you please tell the minister right away? He mightn't listen to me, but, but coming from you, sir. It's an offense for a wife to be consorting with another man. It's a sin. But it doesn't give a husband reason to commit murder. Won't you try? All right. All right, I'll call the minister. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Remember, there isn't much hope. Have a cup of tea, Mrs. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> chance leave a black box behind me this morning. I uh, wonder when you'd be back for your samples. Patrick, give us up that case there. Well, being honest myself, I didn't even take the littlest peek at it. You see, no need to worry. Was there now? No, everything is in good order. Just to God we haven't found that box. What's the idea? Am I praying all the way and my prayers being answered? Finish your drink, Mr. Kremen. <laughs> we must be back in time for the midnight watch. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes. We're ready to proceed in any event. Yes, I'll wait for your call. Thank you, sir. Well, the minister will let us know. But he doesn't think this last-minute confession will change anything. I hope there'll be a stay. You're not also getting sentimental about hangings, are you? It isn't that I'm getting sentimental, only... Only what? Well, himself and his box of tools. They're lost. Tools, that is. You mean we may not be able to proceed on time? <laughs> There was an old man to make Kitty Burn play. You're right, for right, for right. There was an old man to make Kitty Burn play in the school of old boys. For the most of this day, we are right, for la, titty, for la, for la, 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 we are gonna play. One day, this old man, he walked down with a glen. Right, for right, for titty, for la. One day, this old man, he walked down with a glen, and he met with the devil, said, no, we are then, we are right. See what I see, Minna. Bleeding liquor salesman samples.
night for the stars. If there's life on any of them, I wonder if the same things happen up there. Maybe some warders on a planet are walking across a prison yard this minute. And some fellow waiting on the rope in the morning is looking out through the bars for a long look at our Earth and the moon for the last time. Though I never saw them to bother much about things like that. It's nearly always vicious with our wives and mothers, and then we don't send them, only throw them into the grave after them. They say, what's the sense in broadcasting such distressful rubbish? You'll be resting now, I hope. I'll come back at 7.30. You'll see that there's a good breakfast for him? Of course, Father. on sporting topics will also be appreciated. Let's go and look lively. Yes, sir. And Mr. Crennan, take off your watch. change anything, but I felt duty-bound to. Oh, of course, sir. I guarantee it will all go off in the best of order. Thank you, sir. Tell the chief for going ahead. You all decked out for the hanging, not for your husband getting out today. You wouldn't expect me to wear mourning for the likes of the queer fella. I'll have the usual without the lemon. Soon it'll be eight. I'll say a few prayers for the queer fella. You might not have to, you two-faced bitch. He might get a reprieve. Go on home, you bloodthirsty animals. There'll be no hanging. I spoke to the governor myself last night. And you better get in off the streets. Look after your own shop, Rob, before I'm sure I'm... yours will be well taken care of. After they top the queer fella. I'll have the idea. No, 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 that's enough. Sit down. Come on and sit down, Kathleen. I'll get you another drink. Well, he's in perfect health, sir. Did he have a good breakfast? As particular as he was about his rashes and eggs, he didn't eat very heartily. He'd be settled for confession when he knows there's absolutely no hope. My final words, sir. There was some new evidence. I told it to the minister, but after due deliberation, he didn't consider it sufficient for a reprieve. Never 
I've seen a man die, Mr. Regan. Of course, I had my callous savage that's used to it. Oh, I didn't mean that. Sir. I didn't like it the first time any more than I like it now. No, sir. It was a little Protestant lad that first time. He asked if he could be walked backwards so that he wouldn't see the rope. I even at you. May he forgive us all. The young clergyman that was on, it was his first hanging too. He was great. He read a bit of the Bible to the little lad while they waited. And he came in holding his hand and telling him in their way to lean on the mercy of God that was stronger than the power of man. I walked beside them, guided the boy onto the trap and onto the beam. The hood was pulled over his face, the rope put around him and the wash around his ear. And still the young clergyman in a grand, steady voice called out to him in through the hood, I declare to you my living Christ this night. And he stroked his head till he went down. Only then he fainted. The chaplain and myself had to carry him out into the governor's office. Sorry. I, I, Everyone is afraid in the sight of death. But you'll be a consolation to the queer fella, just as you were during the night, and he's depending on you. And you're going to do the right thing for him. someone, maybe. There's still a little time. Maybe. Maybe it'd be better not to count on a reprieve any longer. Drink this up. We'll know for sure when we hear the prisoners chant.
they don't need me anymore. I'm no further use to them, but you are. Do what I can. I thought you might. All set? Yes, sir. You're to car V779. That'll indicate the queer fella's grave. <clears throat> You're to get the usual two bottles of stout per man, but only if you work fast. to get this over with before the exercise period begins. to one of the Sunday papers. They're not exclusively your property any more than anybody else. Look, there's no need to have a battle over them. Divide them, divide them. I know that likes enough my share. Yes. Yes, we can act like businessmen. Fair enough. I'm a businessman myself. Sure, what's a crook only a businessman without an office? There's no need to explain. I know you tried. What are you going to do now? Oh, I don't know. Go away. If I can help. That's all. There's nothing you can do now. 